Hi guys, <laughs> welcome to my channel. I'm Angela. Happy Sunday, fam bam. Happy Sunday, or whatever day it is where you are. I hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing day today. Guys, I hope you are having a good Sunday thus far. Uh, today is usually my rest day. Uh, it's just a day of rest for me. Um, but God wanted me to go ahead and release this word of warning. So I'm just going to move in obedience and go ahead and release the word uh, that God has given me. It's a word that God gave me and also some things that he wanted me to talk about, guys. Um, as always, please take any word that I give you or any other servant of God gives you. Please, guys, please take each and every word back to God in prayer for confirmation. All right? Always. So that you can confirm the word in your quiet time, but also get more revelation in regards to that word. All right? Also, I'm going to continue to encourage that you develop your own intimate relationship with God. He desires that above any and everything else, okay? God wants you to recognize the voice, his voice for yourselves and develop that relationship with him for yourselves, okay? So make sure that you're taking the time to get to have that relationship with God. He desires that. And I'm going to keep encouraging it over and over, all right? Also, guys, if you hear the background noise, uh, I am in the car. Uh, it is actually hot out here, so I have the air conditioner going, all right? Um, I want to go ahead um, and get to what God is saying. But I wanted to say, guys, if you can grab your Bibles or your phones or laptop or whatever we're going to uh read psalms 91 at the end of the word okay we're going to all uplift and encourage each other with psalms 91 after uh, i go over the word all right um also when i give these type of words i always like to say god does not give us and remind you that god does not give us these words to plant fear I am just the vessel that's being used to develop to deliver God's words, okay? So make sure that you understand that God is always going to warn us before prep, uh, before destruction. He's always going to warn us so that we will know how to prepare and how to pray, all right? So don't allow these words to plant fear. He did not give us the spirit of fear. And I'm not saying that you and I won't be concerned because we will, but God, he's with us. He's with us. And because he loves us and because he's there with us, he wants to warn us. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get into the word. And like I say, get your Bibles for the end. I am going to read what God gave me actually this morning. Uh, to go ahead and release guys this message was given to me at 4 27 a.m god wants me to release it and then i will begin to start going into the things that god is speaking about in this hour all right so it reads world uh world war three is coming that will cause a catastrophe of things to happen that many are not ready for Get ready to see much destruction in the future. The solar eclipse is the beginning of many troubles ahead. Many things will happen due to the, due to the after effects of the eclipse. Brace yourselves for the things to come, says the Lord. Prepare yourselves physically and mentally for what's to come. Many people will be affected by this solar eclipse in a way that they're, that they're unaware of. Pay attention to the signs of the time. They are here, says the Lord. I will bring back my people to a place of peace. Prepare for, prepare for my coming, says the Lord. Independence Day is closer than you think and weapons of mass destruction will follow. Citizens of the United States and surrounding nations will feel my wrath because they have agreed to a demonic system that is not of me, says the Lord. 
Put away your idols and look towards the heaven. My return is near. The world has full of empty hearts and greedy hands that I will now bring down in my judgment. Warn my people of my words, says the Lord. The last part of it this morning that he gave me was many will perish for lack of knowledge. Teach them about me while they can still find me, says the Lord. Warn them of my words. So guys, that is the rainbow word. Uh, again, God gave that word at 427 a.m. and wanted me to release it. Um, I am going to start... Uh, if you've been with me, guys, I'm just going to read it the way that he gives it to me in my prayer. If you've been with me or if you're a new subscriber, I read it the way that God gives it to me. And I also give dates so we can see how frequent God is speaking the same thing, okay? And I will sometimes refer you back to previous videos so that you can also see, you know, again, how often God, frequent uh, God is speaking. The first thing with this rhema word this morning uh, in prayer, God was stating with this eclipse, people will go back to business as usual. Uh, not understanding the after effect of this eclipse. He stated this solar system will bring on demonic activity and demonic beings upon the world. This portal and he was stating that portals are going to open the uh, that this solar eclipse is going to allow portals to begin to open demonic portals and he stated with these demonic portals that will open it will open to demonic sicknesses which is man-made mental behavior physical weaknesses and unbalance and demonic beings upon the earth. I repeat, God stated with this solar eclipse, there will be a demonic portal that will open. And with this demonic portal opening up, it will bring about demonic sicknesses, which are man-made, uh, mental behavior, physical weaknesses, and unbalanced and demonic beings upon the earth. This is not just an eclipse, but the opening to many troubles ahead. The air, sea, and land will be affected by these portals opening. Darkness will enter the land and many things will follow that we are not prepared for. These are the things that God was speaking about this morning, guys, about just the just uh, portals that are, are demonic portals that are going to open. Uh, and, you know, if you go back and just go back to the history, I'm not going to go through too much, um, you know, too much on here. I don't want to make the video long, but go back to your history. Every time we have a solar eclipse, something major or tragic happens shortly after. And that is what God is saying. Get prepared for this. Get prepared that this eclipse, even though you, you know, it may look like we're just going back to business as usual, there is no more business as usual. Just like there is no more, we have a new normal. There is no going back. God is stating that these portals are going to open, that are going to cause demonic, demonic sicknesses mental behavior, physical weakness and unbalance and demonic beings upon the earth. He kept speaking about it this morning, guys, in my quiet time, just about these portals opening and how it was going to affect us so in so many ways. And it was going to cause um, just, you know, just a whole lot of chaos and trouble and, and demonic uh, activity upon the world. And we have to get prepared for it. Now, this is not for us to fear, okay? I want to continue to stress that. Let's not fear it, but let's 
open our ears to hear what God is speaking, okay? We're, we're not fearing it, but we will listen to what God is saying so we can pray and stay in prayer and also so that we will know how to prepare, okay? So God was speaking about that and he continued to speak and we've been speaking about it you know, over and over and over in Rhema words uh, that I've delivered recently about air, sea, and land. God is still speaking about demonic activity, air, sea, and land. We go to Revelation. We see that the, uh, you know, that God is going to release. Uh, there's going to be a period of time well, where the enemy will be released, guys, out in uh, into the uh, earth. And we have so much Antichrist. He's already roaming. Antichrist is already roaming the land now. Is already upon the earth already. You know? So we just have to prepare for what God is saying with these portals. And be prepared for it physically, spiritually, and mentally. Okay? Um... God was speaking this morning about Independence Day again. Independence Day is closer than we think and weapons of mass destruction will follow. God is still speaking about Independence Day. We talked about it a couple of days ago in another rhema word where God was speaking. You know, he's been talking to us for over a year in rhema words about Independence Day and really until recently he gave me the revelation and i'll go over really quickly independence day means freedom destruction attack and invasion there will be an attempt uh there will be an attempt takeover through taking away the freedom of man war and attacks on the nation destruction to the land and invasion by intruders so these are the things that God is still speaking about Independence Day. And this morning, he still was speaking it, okay? The last, before I go to the other things that God was speaking about, um, you know what? I'll keep that to the end. I'll wait until the end because that's very important for us to pay attention to as well. But I will save that part to the end. Uh, on 4-1, God st stated, objects will begin to fly and be seen in many places. Prepare for intense warfare because of what's to come. Stand firm and know that I am with you. Um, God has been really sp speaking to us about seeing objects and aliens and demonic activities and uh, shapeshifters. He's been continuously speaking about that. God is still speaking about it, but now he is stating that objects will begin to fly and be seen in many places. And he just kept talking about us seeing objects and he's been getting us ready for it by, you know, visions of spaceships, by dreams of spaceships, by words about spaceships, whether it's planned, demonic, whatever, we will see them. And God stated, we will see them in many places. Also, prepare for the intense warfare because of what's to come. Stand firm and know that I am with you. Christians being persecuted. He's still talking about it. Christians being persecuted. We see it now. It will get intense. Almost unbearable, God was stating on 4-1 and this morning. And that we need to stand in our faith. Do not conform and do not reject him. Do not conform and do not reject him, okay? He was stating about the just persecution. We're going to see it more and more, and it's going to get intense. So let's continue to pray against, um, against these demonic... Uh, you know against these demonic agendas let's continue to pray as the body of christ also on 4 1 there will be more ships that collide and cargo ships will be displaced says the lord there will be more ships that collide and cargo ships will be displaced says the lord so you know, that's all that he gave me. He said, we'll see more ships. He's continuously talked about ships and, and words, but cargo ships will be displaced. I don't know what that means, 
displaced where, 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 you know, what that means. So that's what he gave me. He wanted me to release as well. Also, there will be another train wreck happening soon that will cause many issues. Warn my people of what's ahead. He stated another train wreck will happen. We had them in the past. He stated a major one will happen again that will cause many issues and to warn my people of what's ahead. On 4-3, he stated about uh, extraterrestrial beings. But this time he stated extraterrestrial things and beings will be, so will be seen soon. Warn the people, says the Lord. That was on 4-3. He's been giving us word after word after word when it comes to that as well. Um, so, guys, just get ready to see. He's been warning us of undescribable things, uh, catastrophe, chaos. He's been warning us of this. Also, perversion will be the new normal in this society. And what's good will be bad and what's bad will be good. My judgment is near, says the Lord. Uh, God gave a word. He's been talking about perversion a lot um, in my quiet time, uh, in my prayer time. And he was stating, he gave, uh, if you want to go back to a word, 12, 12, 23, where God gave us a warning about the new Sodom and Gomorrah and how the world would get more perverted and homosexuality being at an all-time high. That word was on 12, 12, 23. God is still speaking about perversion. Is going, we're going to see it get, we think it's bad now. God was stating we are, we are going to see things get even worse. So that's why I say, please, you know, monitor what your kids are watching their ear gates their eye gates from what they're uh, you know ear gates from what they're listening to eye gates from what they're watching um you know the enemy works through through the world wide web it's just a demonic portal he works through that and it you know it's a two-edged sword we can spread the gospel which is a good thing you know with internet but then the there's a demonic side to that and it's just a portal that's open up to so many different spirits and so many different things and agendas and we have to be open to that we uh, we have to make sure our children are not open to that okay but he was speaking about perversion if we go to isaiah 5 20 today i'm reading from the nlt the new living translation it reads, what sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil. That dark is light and light is dark. That bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. What sorrow for those who are wise in their own eyes and think themselves so clever. And it's going to be a time and we see it now that everything that is good they, they, they call it bad and everything that is bad they call it good and they glorify it and God was stating that that is what's happening perversion will be the new normal in this society and what's good will be bad and what's bad will be good but my judgment is near and we see that that is happening now we see it now uh, he's still talking about it also on 4-5, he stated, times are changing and my people must get ready to weather the storm and they must continue to seek my face. Again, times are changing and my people must get ready to weather the storm and they must continue to seek my face. God was stating that a lot of things, guys, are about to take place and we are going to have to be rooted um, rooted in him we're going to have to be rooted in God you know we talked about this the other day we really going to have to be rooted in God consecrate ourselves and really be in the presence of God that is the only way that we can make it that is the only way that we can go get through this okay all right so God is really speaking about we 
weathering the storm, weathering the agendas, weathering the, 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 the plans and the plots that are happening behind closed doors, weathering the things that are, are happening in the world or about and about to happen, we are going to have to be rooted in God like we've never been rooted in him before. And that is being in his word and being in his presence. So to be able, also he spoke about relying. He's still t talking about it. Relying on him to provide. He will provide. He will provide. Not to rely on systems and government. Man is not going to save us, only God. And I always tell you, it doesn't matter if it's a recession, recession, depression. God is still God. God still sits on the throne. He's still a good God, a full of mercy, full of grace. He's going to make sure that we have protection, provision, whatever we need. And that doesn't mean we don't do our part, but he's going to make sure we're, we're taken care of. But we can't, we have to come out and he keeps talking about it and wanting me to stress about depending on him. Keep our eyes focused on him and not depending on systems and government because when it's all said and done at the end of the day, as time goes on, those things are going to go away. They're going to be eliminated altogether. Because there are agendas. If you don't conform to this, then we'll take this. If you don't, you know, conform to this agenda, this plan, then we will take this away from you or we will take that away from you. It's going to come a time of that. Because if you and I chose not to conform, there's a consequence to that. And that's losing things. But we're not losing things. We're gaining things with God because God is going to make sure we're taken care of. God is going to make sure that we have a roof over our head, food in our mouth. God is going to take care of us, whether that's making sure somebody else bless us or we bless somebody else. But God is going to take care of us because what? He still sits on the throne. Okay, so we're not going to give in to agendas. We're not going to conform to agendas of this wor wicked world, but keep our eyes on God. Okay. God is still speaking about that. Also that same day, he stated a war is coming. Prepare the people where he is telling us in the rhema word. World war three is coming. That will cause a catastrophe of things to happen that many are not ready for. He's telling us what is happening. He spoke it again about the war. He's been warning us of war and drafting and men and women being called away uh, at the drop of a dime. God is saying, he's still speaking those things. Also about aliens. I'm still on uh, four or five. April 5th, he spoke about aliens. Aliens will begin to be seen on earth and my people must not fear, but pray. There is an attack on mankind. That is the plan of the enemy. Again, aliens. I know some of you guys say, well, that's demons. When I read you the way he gives it to me in prayer. We all know to me, aliens is demonic, but I read it the way that he gives it to me. Aliens will begin to be seen on earth and my people must not fear, but pray. There is an attack on mankind. That is the plan of the enemy, says the Lord. He has been warning us of this world looking different. Um, we will begin to start seeing demonic activities. He told us in the word earlier uh, in uh, extraterrestrial things and beings spaceships, aliens, shapeshifters, rep reptilians, whatever. God is stating, get ready for it. But hear what he said. But you, my people must not fear, but pray. So we have to stay in prayer. We have to stay encouraged because God is still with us. We're not going to fear it, okay? But we're going to listen to what God is speaking. All right? Also, uh, on four, five, six, and this morning, in the four, the uh, four o'clock, four o'clock uh, word this morning, God stated, "Idolism will be the reason for the fall of this country." 
the United States. He didn't mention any other nation right in this particular uh, conversation. He stated that idolism will be the reason for the fall of this, of this country, United States. Too many hearts are hardened against me. <sighs> There's a fall of, you, of the U.S. and other nations, but with this giving it to me this morning, he stated um, idolism. When he spoke about idolism, even though it, he's going to be dealing with the uh, America and other nations, this particular one was, he stated idolism will be the reason for the fall of this country, America. Too many hearts are hardened against me. America is placed it America is placing ourselves and everything else above him and he will no longer allow it. People hearts are far uh, are are for the things of this world and not him. We must all come back to the one who created us and stop worshiping creation. We worship creation. We're worshiping ourselves, worshiping others, worshiping the things that God has placed here other than worshiping the creator. He gets all the praise. He's the only idol that we should have. We should not have any other gods, lowercase g's. He's the only one true God. And he's the only one that sits on the throne. So God is stating that idolism will be the reason for the fall of this country. Too many hearts are hardened against me. And we're focusing, we're so distracted, not just America, but other nations, so distracted by other things. And that is the, the, the trick of the enemy. That is the trick of the enemy. If he can distract us to look at everything else and to focus on everything else, then we can't focus on God. Then that allows fear. We can't focus on God. That allows doubt. That allows, you know, that allows so much anxiety, depression, uh, you know, just unbelief when we're distracted because God, the fruits of God is peace gentleness you know love those are the things of god and we can't receive that if we're not in the if we're not if we're not spending time with god all right we cannot receive those things and god is he he keeps talking <laughs> I, he keeps talking about idols 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 that will be the downfall of America because idols of power, money, fame. This is the things that America looks at. These are the things that America follows. And not just America, other nations. But when he stated idolism this morning, he stated that will be the reason for the fall of this country, the United States. Too many hearts are hardened against me. It's, it's, it's everybody, it's our own agendas, not his agenda. It's what we want, not what he want. It's selfishness instead of selflessness. And that is what God is speaking. So we have to wake up. We have to wake up whether we want to hear it or not. We have to wake up. Forget, the, forget if you don't like the message. Forget if you don't like the messenger. It doesn't matter. Wake up. That is what God is causing, calling for us to do. So, guys, he's still talking about that, okay? Also, uh, the last thing that I wanted to go back to. In prayer this morning, I told you God stated, Many will perish for lack of knowledge teach them about me while they can still find me says the lord this was a message for me and for you as believers as leaders god was stating that 
that all leaders need to get in positions and speak what he's asked you to speak. Speak it boldly. He keeps talking about speak up, speak up. It's too many people who are who silent. It's too many people who is intimidated by what uh, other people think, other people's opinions. Speak it. Speak it boldly. Speak it courageously. Keep speaking it. All believers speak. We're all ambassadors for Christ. Speak. It doesn't matter if you're leaders. But he only stated for leaders, speak. Whenever he told you to speak, speak. You are held responsible if you don't open your mouth and speak what God has asked you to speak as a leader. God is saying, speak. And all believers, open your mouth. There are people perishing because they, you, we miss out on the opportunity to spread the gospel. Keep speaking. And if the message is rejected, shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. Go on to the next place and spread the gospel. God, Jesus did it. He went on to the next place. We're not going to convince anybody or beat it over their head because it's not about religion. It's about relationship. And we're not going to beat it over anybody's head. It's for us to, to, to plant the seed and for God to water it. So shake the dust off your feet. If they don't accept it, they don't accept it. And keep moving. Okay, but God is saying open. Open your mouth. Speak. Spread the gospel. Wherever you go, wherever you are, work, church, school, uh, school, whatever, whatever, grocery store, wherever you are, take the opportunity, you and I, to spread the gospel. But God is stating, guys, over and over, even believers, even believers are distracted. God is saying, pay attention, get in his presence, get in your prayer closet and hear what he's saying in this hour. He's warning us, consecrate ourselves. Consecrate ourselves. Get in his presence so that we can hear what God is speaking in these end times. So that we can hear instruction, divine instructions for our lives, okay? Ooh. Okay. Bear with me. I just want to make sure that I have everything, okay? Guys, I want to read the scripture that God led me to this morning. It's Romans 1.18. This is when Paul was uh, speaking to the Romans, okay? Just about sin. He was speaking to them about sin. And, you know, when they ignore sin, when they know the right thing to do, but choose to do uh, what they want to do. You know, even though they know better, they didn't do better. And it, said, and it reads, But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see he is invisible his invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature so they have no excuse for not knowing God yes they know God but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks and they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like as a result their minds became dark and confused Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious ever-living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. God abandoned them 
to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did not vile, they did, I'm sorry, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself. Who is worthy of eternal praise? Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And then the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of this sin, it's a sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. So God, this is not something, you know, God has been speaking to us about perversion and homosexuality. He tells you, I'm not telling you, Angela, God is telling you, it's a sin. And God was stating that it we will begin to see it um, become, you know, happen at an all-time high. We will see it get worse, um, just to continue to get worse and worse. And we have to be prepared for it. But we also can't shut our mouths about it. And again, I always tell you, it's a way to deliver things. The things of God, always remember it to do it in love, Okay. We're not going to come and, and correct anybody uh, with condemnation. That's not of God either. So make sure that as we correct and as we speak what God is asking us to speak, and we're speaking up the things of God, that we're doing it in love. All right? Do all things in love. That is who God is. He's love. Okay? So as we see these things and also just you know, um, as we see the sin, like, I mean, like Paul was stating here, they knew that they know what's right and wrong. Just like now we know what's right and wrong, but sometimes people choose to go the, go opposite direction. And they just like, they have to deal with the consequences of God, God's judgment and his wrath. We have to deal with the consequences and his wrath. We are not exempt just because this is this is ancient <laughs> just because this is ancient is still ha this is god is still the same he has not changed his justice his judgment his wrath it has not changed okay so god is still speaking it he's still uh you know, speaking about it, uh, about perver about perversion, about homosexuality, and we know perversion is other things. Uh, pornography, we know it's other things uh, as well. It's not just that, but God was speaking about that, and he also spoke it, like I said, if you want to go back to that word, 12, 12, 23, he was speaking it then. We just have to listen. So, guys, I just wanted to really come and deliver this word in obedience uh it, it it was not i was not planning on doing this uh today but i want to encourage you i want to please take the time to even though god has given me this uh this word guys to deliver i want to take the time to encourage you and to understand that god is a good god okay He's a good God. He's a merciful God, but he's, he just wants us to do the right thing. And he's giving us time. He's giving us a, a, a length, a, a time of grace to get it right because he loves us. God don't want anybody to perish. He loves us. But we have to take heed to what God is saying. But I want to take this time to encourage you and please hear my heart and hear God's heart. He is with us. As long as we're walking in, in with faithfulness and obedience and really have the heart that's after God, God just wants us to want him. 
not what he can do for us, not his hand, but his heart. God don't want us focused on us, what we want, what we need, but what he wants to give us, what he is asking from us. God is asking for that. God is saying, focus on me. Focus on me. Love, you know, love me. God is so deserving. He's so deserving. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. God's a good God. <laughs> and he... He truly don't want anybody to perish. He don't. And he's going to take care of us. It doesn't matter what's going on out there. God is going to make sure that we're taken care of. He's in here. God is right here. And he's going to make sure that we get everything that we need. All right. He just wants us to be prepared. He wants us to be prepared. So let's open our mouths. Let's do what God has called us to do. Let's be who God has called us to be. All right. Guys, if you have your Bible, your phone or whatever, I just want to take the time because I know these words can be hard. I get it. I just want to take the time for us. Uh, let's read Psalms 91. Uh, let's encourage each other, okay? And just continue to remember that God will never leave us nor forsake us. All right? Guys, I am parked. So if you see someone here, um, I'm parked because I, I wanted to be able to do this and then do what I had to do today. All right? Um, it reads in Psalms 91, guys, let's read it together, okay? It reads, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers he will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, Though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. If we just show God our love, honor God, do what we supposed to do, God is going to be with us. Don't fear. God just wants us to take heed to his word. He wants us to hear it and take heed to it and hear his heart and just move in obedience. Okay? 
So guys, I want to say, I just feel led to say a prayer. And then after a prayer, I will uh, just do an altar call. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, our Father in heaven. Lord, I ask, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you let every demonic plan, assignment, and attack against our families, against this world, against the country and our nations fail, God, that you block it and that you stop it in the name of Jesus. God, we ask, Lord, for your grace and mercy upon us, O Lord. God, you say that you will never leave us nor forsake us. God, be with us. Surround your angels, God, your warring angels to war against the kingdom of darkness on our behalf. God, dispatch your ministering angels to minister us, God, to minister to us that we may know in which way to go, God, in which way to stay in alignment with your will and your purpose. God, we pray, Lord, that you let your provision and your protection reign upon us. Let your spirit fall upon the land, oh God. God, allow hardened hearts to repent. Allow hardened hearts against you, God, to repent, God, and receive you in their hearts and in their lives. God, let your spirit fall. Let the ears, God, that will hear your words hear. And the hearts that will receive it, receive it. God, we ask for your protection, O oh Lord. We will not fear, God, because you asked us not to fear. You didn't tell us that it will be times we, we, that we would not fear. You say don't fear because you are with us. We're going to believe in you, God. And we're not going to stand in fear, but we're going to stand in faith. God, we love you. We so love you. And we adore you, God, with all of our hearts and our souls. And we give you so much praise. And we honor you, God. And we say this prayer in your precious and holy son's name. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. So, guys, that is the word today. Uh, continue to anoint your homes. Uh, God has really been stating to anoint our homes, anoint your homes, anoint your families, your kids, anoint in your car, just anoint your space, okay? Continue also, remember his words, anoint and meditate. Um, meditate on his word day and night. We gain our strength and we build our spiritual muscle when we are in the presence of God, all right? When we're in his word. Continue to pray, continue to fast. And we're not going to fear. We're going to stand in faith. All right. So, guys, I want to allow this time in this safe space for anyone who wants to give their lives to Christ. Also, anyone who wants to rededicate your lives to Christ, you can. If you made a decision or a choice that you know is not of God and you really want to get back, you know, just get back in the presence of God and and get rededicate your life to Christ, you can. God loves you and I. And it's nothing that you and I have done so bad. It's nothing that you think is so bad that will allow God to reject you. He loves us more than we can ever think or imagine so if you want to rededicate your lives or give your lives to christ just acknowledge jesus as the son of god confess your sins repent of it and turn away from it it's more than confessing and sin and repenting but turn away from whatever you know is not pleasing to god all right allow god to baptize you with his spirit but also allow God to guide you and lead you to a church that you can get baptized, all right? Remember, we are the church in the building and out of the building, okay? And it's not about religion. It's about relationship. Remember that, all right? It's never about religion. 
It's always about relationship. God wants a relationship with us. That is what he desires. So just know that God loves us, okay? And i rather just keep walking in this evil world with God than without him. I pray that you give your life or you gave your life to Christ. He's a loving God and a wonderful God, but he is also a God of judgment. And neither, you know, you and I don't want to be on the other side of that. We don't want to be on the other side of that. So guys, I just pray that you gave your life to Christ. Don't allow um, the message to plant fear, but stay encouraged. Let's continue to encourage one another because we serve a good God. We serve a good and a mighty father and he's so loving and he's worthy. He's worthy. So guys, that is the word today. Um, I just wanted to end it just to encourage you <laughs> and love on you and just really speak about the goodness of God. He's worthy. He's deserving. He's so deserving. <laughs> he's, a, whew, he's a good God. You just got to try him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's good, guys. He's good. He did too much for me. He didn't did too much for me. I didn't been a long way. You know, and time after time after time, he brought me out. He delivered me. He he blessed me in spite of me. He loved me in spite of me, in spite of my mistakes. He loved me in spite of it. And he loved you too. He's a good God. And he loves us so much. I'm sorry, God. Oh, I didn't been too too much not to praise him. <laughs> I'm sorry. So God, no, guys, know that God loves you, and you guys just keep shining, keep being the light. Don't conform to this world or the wicked agendas of it. Let's continue to walk in unity, and don't allow them to divide us. Keep loving and showing up for one another. We're all going through something. It may look different for each and every one of us. So be patient. Be kind to one another, okay? Be patient, be kind, and show love. It don't cost a thing to be kind to each other. We need each other more than ever. Surround yourselves with like-minded people that can encourage you. That you can encourage each other and uplift each other. Surround yourself with people that's like-minded. This is not the time to be around people that's negative or, or bring you down or, or keep you in a state of, of just up and down or emotional roller coaster. This is not the time. <laughs> this is not the time. Surround yourselves with like-minded, loving people that love you and love God just as much. Okay. So guys, that is it today. Please stay encouraged. Let's continue to pray for one another. Know that God loves you unconditionally. And I love you. <laughs> and until next time, God willing, we'll talk again. All right. And you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.